Hi everyone, it's Ross here with Initiate and this morning I'm creating a site analysis diagram for a new project. So I thought I'd bring you along, show you my workflow and the tools and resources I use to research a site and create effective and simple site analysis diagrams. So I think site analysis gets a bad rep in our profession. Many think that if you draw a solar path and a wind arrow onto a plan, then that's your site analysis complete and you should move on and never consult it again. But it has to be much more than that. It should capture your experience of the place as well as the more objective climate factors that are important to consider as we move forward with the design. For me it's an absolutely critical first stage in my design process and I spend some time in developing effective diagrams to communicate and capture what I've learned about a place and what I should understand and harness in an emerging design proposal. I like to visit site for the first time with no preconceptions. So all I tend to take is an iPad with a screenshot satellite image and use Procreate to trace over that with what I'm finding during the site visit and what I'm experiencing on site. That might be long views over the countryside to features in the landscape or shorter views around the site to areas of biodiversity. Or it could be your experience of wind in reality. So there might be a southwesterly prevailing wind, but in this site it's quite sheltered and, and buffered by some tree screening to the perimeter. And the wind within the site tends to swirl around. So you start to experience that in person before you do your wind research. Okay, so we're back in the studio, site visit's done, and here we have our site visit markup, which has captured everything that I've experienced and observed on the site during my site visit. Now the next step is to translate this into a diagram, but also to do a desktop study and input any other data that we might find that is more factual, so actual solar path diagrams, wind direction, and utilities for instance. So let's get into it and I'll show you the key resources that I use to find this information and then how I create the site analysis diagram from start to finish. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. This is the program I like to create my diagrams in. The first step is to create a new A3 landscape canvas. That's because this diagram is going to form part of an A3 landscape feasibility study. So I wanted to get the scale and format of the diagram correct from the start. So the first step is to import a base plan of the site. Now I like to keep this very simple and just show the outline of the site and any specific features you might want to get imported at an accurate scale. I like to use CAD Mapper for downloading DWGs of my sites. Uh, the best thing about CAD Mapper is that it's free to download a file up to one kilometer squared. So here you just select your site area, select AutoCAD or a relevant software for you and create the file here. So I've gone into AutoCAD, cleaned up the file so that all I have here is a simple site outline and the footprint of an existing barn that I wanted to be accurately drawn to scale. So this gives us a base plan to now start working into. So after developing a number of these diagrams, I've produced a diagram toolkit for use in my practice. And here are all of my graphic standards and symbols I tend to use for diagrams. If you're interested in this, there's a link in the description where you can download my diagram assets and start creating your own site analysis diagrams very quickly. So now the first thing I'm going to add to our diagram is the trees and vegetation on the site. So I'll copy and paste those symbols across to our diagram here and start populating the perimeter of the site with the vegetation that we've documented. There's all of the trees mapped onto our site perimeter. So as I experienced on site, there was a strong wind off of the southwest, but this area here felt very sheltered in particular. But that was mainly because of these larger trees forming a buffer against the edge. So to indicate that, We'll just draw a thicker line here that will indicate a buffer to the corner there. And we'll just add some text to denote that with a tree screen on the corner. So the next thing I want to establish is the wind direction. Now I experienced it coming off the southwest and I think that's what the prevailing wind would be for this area. But to check that there's a couple of resources that I use. 
First is Ventusky. Now I really enjoy this graphically as much as anything else, but I find it really useful to establish live wind conditions and how that might change across the course of a day and in previous days. So if we zoom into the region in which we're working, this is about as close as you can get. As you can see from the animations that the wind today is coming in from the northeast. Uh, however, if you go back several days, you can see how that might change. You go back to last month and the wind's coming from different directions. I find Ventusky useful to confirm that my understanding of where the wind was coming from on the day of my site visit was correct. So, for instance, you identify the day that you visited site and you can see here that it confirms that it's coming from the west slash southwest. But the more useful wind data resource would be Autodesk Formit. Now, if you just launch a format for web, so you do need an Autodesk account, which is free to set up, and that will direct you to this format web application. And if you click the location button on the toolbar here, that will bring up a map and you can search for your site here. And you can zoom out and see a number of weather stations. And from each of these weather stations, you can get accurate windrows data. Now my site is in this region here, and the nearest weather station appears to be this one outside of Bonvilston. So if you click on that weather station, then all of its data will pop up. And you can see here a series of very helpful wind roses. And if I click on that, what that confirms is that the prevailing wind is directly out of the west with a strong wind coming from the west, southwest, more often than any other direction. So I'll now take these findings and drop back into our diagram here and just grab the wind arrow here to start plotting that information on. So here I'll indicate that the strong prevailing wind is off of the west. So that confirms along with the Fantasky data that, okay, prevailing wind is off the west, which is somewhat sheltered by this tree screen. And what we might consider in an emerging design is forming a more robust screening method to protect the site from the west. And we'll just add a note to indicate that west wind is the prevailing wind. So the next thing would be utilities. Now when I was on the site, I noticed a couple of inspection chambers in the highway to the south, which indicates that it's likely that a mains utilities and mains sewer connection exist underneath the public highway. If we want to confirm that that's the case and ensure that we can potentially connect to that with a new design, then we'll need to visit our national water company's website and use their developer services. So in Wales, our water company is Welsh Water, and they have developer services where you can pay a small fee for a drainage and water search. And what that will typically give you is a diagram like this that indicates where the main sewers and utilities exist in and around your site. So with that information, we've confirmed that there's a utilities connection within the highway. So we'll go back into our assets and copy across a utilities line and plot that on within this diagram with these interconnecting symbols mapping on the locations indicatively of where the inspection chambers exist within the highway. Outwater also confirmed that that is a combined sewer, so storm water as well as foul water. So we'll just annotate that here. Whilst we're on the highway, there's a bus stop conveniently located off of the corner of the site. Now I'll map this on with a simple features symbol and denote the bus stop. Now this is just useful to pick up for a couple of reasons. It's clearly important to know that there's a bus stop in that location that generally needs to be retained and that there is relatively consistent traffic to this highway. But also, as this is a new site with a new dwelling being proposed, then it's useful to know that there's a bus stop as a means of sustainable transport to and from the site, which might help us with our planning applications and justification for this new dwelling. So when on the site, I also noticed that there's a public footpath running through the left-hand side here. And we can simply annotate that with a public right-of-way line 
uh, just to indicate that that should be protected and that public right of way should remain on our site. Now if you wanted to confirm that right of way then you could visit the government's land registry website and get access to a load of information on the property's details such as its tenure type, any restrictive covenants and any right of way. So let's now plot on how the sun interacts with this site. And to do that, the website andrewmarsh.com has a fantastic resource for generating two-dimensional solar path diagrams, where you can select the longitude and latitude of your site, any particular time zone and any time of the year to illustrate how the sun will interact with the site. So what you should do is screenshot this and import into Illustrator as a PNG, which I'll just take a pre-made one here. And once that's in Illustrator, you can resize the solar path to suit the scale of your diagram. So I only use the solar path PNG as a guide, and you can choose whether you want to show the summer and the winter solstice lines, or whether you're just showing the summer solstice solar path. And then I'll just delete the underlying PNG, and I know that I have an accurate line that reflects the solar path across the site. So you should then just add a little note on either side to confirm that clearly the sun rises in the AM on the eastern side and sets in the PM on the western side. So on this diagram I want to emphasize this existing 19th century historic barn and just plot on an initial thought of where a new dwelling might sit against that. So back to the assets here, there are a number of blocks which I use to map on buildings and outlines of buildings. So let's grab this one, this one and this one. Copy those into our drawing. Now I'm simply just going to scale this, re-emphasize the barn and I'll just note under the barn, C19 barn. And against that, my initial thoughts are that there's a potential to put a building along this north-south axis that forms a residential range that can have a link connection into the historic barn. That will provide opportunity maybe to access into an entrance courtyard. And it'll also provide a western buffer to this wind that will then create a sheltered, quite protected garden to the eastern side. So I'm just going to indicate that as a potential buffer in there and then use the more transparent symbol just to indicate the potential link building that could exist between the two. And if you can just double click on the corner here you can drag that to suit. Now from the historic barn there's a potential that that could be converted into a residential space and there's a really beautiful long view to the north side that extends over the hills. So to illustrate that we'll just get the views symbol here and just drag these arrows into position that will indicate a long view. So there's our long view to the north and we'll just note that as a long view. But we also have this building here which is not just providing a buffer, it is also providing views from the courtyard through what could be a partially transparent building envelope through to a large open garden to the eastern side. So we can just indicate that potential for those garden views with a series of arrows here. And finally the courtyard to the western side is already partially gravelled and was largely hard standing, whereas the rest of the site was quite a mature, very biodiverse landscape that we wouldn't want to interrupt with a new project. And if anything, we wanted to be looking to enhance the biodiversity of that landscape. So to this side, I'd like to just indicate that that becomes an arrival courtyard that could be suitable to potentially drive into. But so we'll just do that with this hatch here of dotted lines and finally we just want to indicate that that becomes the arrival point into this site and really that is the only arrival point the trees are forming a boundary to the entire perimeter so this becomes our singular arrival point that is accessed from the street so we can just take this polyline and draw an arrow that starts to lead us into that courtyard 
which we can make slightly thicker, change the colour, and if we click stroke here we can add an end point to that root, and also we can make that a dashed line. So there's our completed site analysis diagram. I really hope you found this useful and see you in the next video.